Welcome to the Hump Day Fun Astrology Podcast. It's Wednesday, January 25th. Thomas Miller, thanks for poking your head in the door. We don't have much new that we haven't talked about this week. We do have the moon leaving Pisces today. For you sequential numbers numerologists, it goes void, of course, in Pisces at 11.11 a.m. Now, how appropriate is that? Eastern time. And then it enters Aries at 147, so you get the rest of the afternoon to put your fire on. Now, I'd like to jump track here for the rest of our time together this morning or this afternoon and pick up with some current events stuff. Don't do this very often. In fact, I really kind of backed away from it simply because we're playing out the consciousness. And I want to feel that what we're doing on Sunday nights with Level Up, 8 p.m. Eastern, on Facebook and YouTube, is something that is actually making a difference. I also see comments that people say Web 3.0, which I don't understand, but basically is going to give the populace a lot of freedom and is going to basically cripple these sinister plans of the elite to dominate the world. Well, that fits the astrology, and so does the dangerous, horrible elites fit the astrology. It's all encased within Pluto entering Aquarius. We've said on here for, what, probably a year and a half, two years, that it was going to be a battle between those two elements, between fierce independence versus fierce control. Look at what's going on in France. Look at what's going on in Peru, Brazil. You, these places are already igniting, and that's going to be the case. Don't be surprised. Somebody reminded me not long ago about us talking about food when Uranus was sitting right on the cusp of the sixth house, which it really still is. And they said, well, grocery stores are stuffed full of food. When you have a planet that takes 84 years to go around the chart, it doesn't get in a hurry. We are such the drive-through society. I mean, if we don't have it now, 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 then we get all frustrated. Just let it all play out. If you stocked a little food away, I would still be happy. I still have some. It's about a thousand miles away from where I am at this moment, but I could get there within about one day's drive. And that's a comfort factor to me. And I've always said, if it doesn't pan out and things look more stable, a food pantry somewhere is going to get a really nice donation. The other thing is, any good defensive military strategist would always look for the weak spots. Where do we need to shore things up? Where are we vulnerable? Where could we ex be exposed to attack? All of these things. I've got the door open in the van if y'all are hearing some of the campground sounds here today. Welcome to the campsite. So as we keep our eye on things, these are some of the areas that I look at personally. And then to try to say consciousness has a lot of room to move within this and to steer and change the direction. So as we come off of the Davos meeting from last week, don't get all excited about all this stuff that you're hearing because consciousness can offset that. They are a lot less powerful than energy, and don't ever forget that. And maybe some of you like what they advocate and like their agenda and like the things that they're talking about. And that's all going to be encased in Pluto entering Aquarius. I am making no bones anymore about I do not like their agendas, but I also will give you room to enter an honest debate if you do. I just want freedom. That's what I want. <laughs> we'll start with that. So let's take a look at one thing in the United States chart, and we've been talking about this indirectly for quite a while. Right now in the United States natal chart from July 4th, 1776, Uranus is at 8 degrees Gemini. And it sits in the equal house system right at the end of, toward the end of the sixth house. Current transits. Remember Mars going retrograde about two weeks ago? Eight degrees Gemini. It is literally sitting right on top of the U.S. Uranus right now. So if you were just doing cookbook astrology, what would you say? Expect something sudden that could be warlike or at least divisional. Gemini, twin, two sides, right? Now, I would not just be looking for a war to break out. That's not what this is saying. It's not what I'm saying. What I'm saying is Uranus is about sudden things. It's about surprises. And remember, Uranus currently in the sky is in the sign of Taurus, which represents, among other things, money. So we'll set the agriculture piece of this aside, and let's talk about the financial side, because... 
for last year, Saturn was squaring Uranus. Now here again, we're talking about the outer planets. These are theme builders. What I'm hearing a lot of people say right now is that they're having trouble financially. Well, do we see that energy in the chart? Sudden is Uranus. An attack on something that was previously stable is Mars. Remember, again, an old theme builder, we are still under the umbrella of the Pluto return. Death and rebirth of all kinds of things, including it could certainly be money. And Uranus rules Aquarius, where Venus is transiting. That's the money planet. And in the United States chart, it's just about to hit the United States moon, which is at 27 degrees Aquarius. Right now, Venus is quickly moving forward at basically 27 degrees. So it's like right there. And remember, the moon is our populace. It's us. It's you and me. It's our soul as well as a country. Now, I just now put the solar arc chart as ring number three outside. So I'm looking at three charts right now. And two things jump out. Number one, solar arc Mars in about two and a half years is going to join that stack of Saturn and the Moon. Saturn actually will be gone, but right now it's just a degree apart. So there's a real alignment between us, the Moon, and the United States natal chart, Saturn transiting, passing through, and Mars, the god of war, sitting there in the solar arc chart at the same spot. Remember the comment about the military strategist looking for weak spots, looking for vulnerabilities? That's one. That is definitely, according to astrology, the potential of conflict, war, separation, Saturn, delays about particularly Aquarian things related to the people of the United States. Let's flip that conversation for just a second. I'm going to take a few extra minutes of your time if you're still with us. If you're not engaged in this, drop off. We'll see you back tomorrow, and thanks for listening. But if we were conscious, how would we read this? See, you don't read mundane astrology on the positive side so much because our conscious, our society is not conscious, right? But what if we were? What I would say is, what a wonderful time, Mars, to ignite some new kind of project, Aquarius, that would completely overhaul the structure of something in the United States. I mean, that could be our infrastructure. It could be our roads and bridges. It could be our telecommunications, our technology, and it could be freedom of technology, not technology that binds. It could be technology that serves and makes things easier. And we would build it from the ground up, Saturn, and it would last for generations, Saturn. You see how that could be absolutely beautiful? And that would be surfing that energy as well on the positive side. So let's hold to that. The one that we still have our eye on and still unfolds around 2024 is Saturn in solar arc chart will be crossing over the United States natal Mars in Gemini. That one we're going to watch play out. Now, let's talk about if money is shifting for you, where do we look? I've been saying this for, again, a couple of years. You've heard it before. It's not new. Get a second income. Get a third income. Find new sources of money. Diversify. I think that this environment for conscious people could be one of the easiest to make money in. Why? Because we all still have basic human needs. Number two, the consciousness is dropping in so many ways. There is so much fear out there right now that if you stand against everything that the media and the culture and the politicians and everybody else is trying to pull us down, if you can rise above that and stand above that, you will be energetically magnetic. You could sell razor blades and you people would flock to you energetically. The culture is getting easier and easier for high energy conscious people to stand up and be recognized. And be magnetic. So take that into the realm of what is a basic need that people have to have. Where would they spend money even during difficult times? And something that you could do is go back and research what did well during the Great Depression in the 1930s. Or look at how people got wealthy in the 1930s during the Great Depression. Several did. So if it gets that bad, that's where you turn. You stand in your high energy. Now, where would you focus? Well, let's bring in the second house of the United States chart. That's where Pluto lives. 
Pluto is all about the corporate power. That's what we have the conflict with today, because it has, over 250 years, become corrupted. Transiting Pluto is right there at that natal position, the great Pluto transit of the United States. So look for the other side of that corporate greed. In other words, I think it could be bringing things back to the masses. So in other words, the mom and pop business might be back in vogue, say, in the next five to ten years. You've got to get ahead of the trends. I mean, think about as a consumer, all right? Let's say you had a widget. You're going to sell widgets. And let's say that you could sell 100 widgets a month and be comfortable. Now, one of your basic needs is for a widget. So you could go to the big box widget store, or you could go to the big box online retail store, where you're not going to get a hold of a person. It's very impersonal to buy widgets, and you have to pay to get it shipped to you. But the other moms in the carpool line are talking about this little local company that's selling widgets. You get them on the phone, and they will talk to you. They will actually have a shipping service that if you wanted to not come to them, you could have somebody deliver it, or you could just go pick it up. They'll have it waiting for you, ready to go. It's a pleasant experience. It's local, and you're supporting a family. Where would you buy the widget? <laughs> that's a no-brainer, right? Even if it cost more, you still would look at how can I scrimp and save to buy the widget. The other area that I think people are turning to is new spirituality. And there's a great interest there, and they need information. Figure that out in the context of what we've been talking about. I'm going to get out of here, taking way too much of your time, but I think this was important to at least examine in the context of what seems to be elevated and amplified even over the last 90, 100 days, 60 days, I don't know, but it seems to be increasing, not decreasing. The bottom line is turn off all the noise and get grounded in your high conscious living and stay there and don't be shaken. So when we have to acknowledge the shadow sides of the chart, we will always look at the positive. Have a great Wednesday. See you back tomorrow.